guys, what's up? It's Allie Hardesty, and today's video is going to be a Q&A, but it's an advice Q&A. Hashtag ask Allie. I have not done these in probably like a year. I did a couple over the summer of like 2016, like last summer, not the summer that we just had, the one before that. And I was like, I'm gonna do these all the time. I don't think I've done one since like ever. So I really love doing these because I love helping you guys out. I'm able to share like my wisdom through experiences type of thing. And I guess just see how much I know about the things that you guys may be dealing with at the moment. I asked you guys for some advice questions on Twitter. Now I'm gonna go ahead and look at them. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please give me a big thumbs up. Also leave a comment below letting me know if I should do a dedicated Ask Allie video on any sort of specific subject like relationships or friendships, etc. That way everyone can just ask me things in that exact criteria. But this one's just very general. How do you get confident around the opposite sex? Honestly, this is something that when I realized it completely changed my perspective. Do you really pick apart people and say, hey, like I don't like this, this, and this about them. No, you recognize them off the bat for their personality and their confidence and the way they carry themselves, right? So you just have to remember that you're your own worst critic. Critic, critic, critic. You're your own worst critic. And because of that, you should just be confident in yourself and make people feel good about themselves. Share that really positive, awesome energy. And if you don't realize how sexy confidence is, like I said, go ahead and look at other people. Like, what do you actually really recognize off the bat about people? How they are, how they represent themselves. How do you stay so positive? Being grateful is a big part of that. You cannot get any anything more handed to you in this life unless you're already grateful for what you have and thankful and appreciative. I also am a big believer in what you put out will come back to you. If you've ever had a bad day where you wake up saying, my day is terrible, everything's going wrong, you can't really expect anything to get better. But when you wake up, even if something kind of goes wrong low key and you're like, today's awesome, today's gonna be a great day, I'm gonna be so productive, I'm gonna be so happy, I'm gonna do so many fun, awesome, cool things. That's usually how your day goes. You just have to set the mindset. And once you get in the habit of doing that, it's a lot easier to be consistently positive and happy. Is there any topic that you get really sensitive about? If so, how do you deal with it? So I guess what you mean by that may be like a topic that triggers you due to something that you've been through. I can definitely say yes to this. I'm not gonna say what exactly it is. It's stuff that I keep very personal that very, very few people even know about. And I would say that you have to learn to accept what you cannot change. And that's everything in the past and that you can only work towards things in the future. The more you come to terms with accepting it and forgiving yourself and forgiving the situation, the better off you're gonna be. That way you're able to apply what you learned throughout that to help other people and help it make you a better and more wiser person. When do you know it's right when getting back together with an ex? Honestly, I've been there. It's turned out really good. It's turned out really bad. I think that you have to understand why you guys broke up and if that reason or reasons, if they're still there, if it's still relevant, unless outside reasons are no longer present, I don't think it's the best idea. And sometimes when it comes to relationships, we make decisions based on our heart instead of our brain. And so you have to really decide what you're making that choice with. But don't rush back into getting in a relationship again with your ex or any relationship for that matter because over time, a lot will come out that you may not see right away because they're putting their best foot forward and so are you. Advice on finding that special someone in your life. Stop looking for that special someone. I know that even if I haven't ended up with like people I've been with in my past or whatever, they came to me and I had really amazing relationships with them when I stopped looking for them. Whenever I have just stopped looking for a boyfriend or for that right person for me and just focused on myself and doing me and bettering myself and my life and my circumstances, I found somebody who's made me really happy because you have to be your best self in order to find someone who's gonna be their best self for you. Focus on you and I swear the right person will come and you're not trying to force something to happen that's not meant to be. Where did you get the inspiration for your YouTube vids? How I feel about it is that everyone has a story to share, advice to give, everyone's life is different, everyone goes through different things at different times and and sometimes it just helps a lot to hear somebody who's been through something similar or the same as you because it can relate to you. And I know that I have a lot of experiences that I haven't shared with people because I haven't had a platform to and now I do and it's like, wow, people can laugh, people can be like, dang, now I don't feel so alone. I honestly found inspiration in like myself to do that because I saw so many other people doing that. And no offense to like any of the people that I watched who like made me want to start my channel. If anything, this is a compliment, but they're nothing special. Just like I'm nothing special. Everyone has a voice and so I think once you remember that everything you have to say is so valid, so important, and can help and reach so many people, you're just going to motivate yourself. You're going to inspire yourself. And by that, you're going to inspire others. How to deal with drama. I have been through enough drama in my lifetime. Being a girl sucks. Being in high school sucks. Even being in college, people still act like they're in high school or even middle school. There was drama. You know, it never ends. It's a part of life. Even adults, I see full grown adults still have drama. But I will say, if you mind your own business,
business, that's a great place to start where you don't even have to get involved in the first place. Also, if you just stay out of things, even if other people's business comes to you, like other people are asking you about it, just act oblivious. Like you don't know anything. Make it clear you don't want to talk about it. Focus on other things. I've gotten really good at doing that over the past few years and I've had very minimal drama. So pick your battles unless you feel very strongly about something. Just keep your mouth shut. Also, don't get involved with people who you know start drama. Like stay as far away from them as possible. Don't even try to be like kind of friends with them to stay on their good side. Just like avoid them completely because you know they're going to end up screwing you over and you're going to end up like in drama somehow because you're friends with them or like cool with them. How do you confront slash leave someone who you feel is stringing you along as a backup plan? If I know somebody is leading me on or if I know somebody is treating me bad, whatever the case may be, I am going to tell them exactly how I feel and why. If you are able to do that in a respectful way, I feel like it will always work out if you let them know like, hey, I'm not dealing with this. This is like kind of bullshit. I feel like this. It really hurts my feelings and I would just like you to be honest with me and that's good that you recognize that you are in a position where you need to leave already and I guess the best step towards making that happen would I guess be to console with that person like yo is this really what's happening because let me know so that I can dip and go be with somebody who wants me and only me and I'm not their second option. Usually the funny thing is once you actually say deuces they usually want you even more so it's kind of a weird like psychological thing once they can't have you they'll probably chase you. What do you do when your teachers constantly invalidate your ADHD slash anxiety disorder? Can definitely relate to the ADHD thing. I don't have like severe anxiety. I definitely have it a lot at times, but it's not something I struggle with on an everyday basis like some people I know, but my ADD, my ADHD, whatever you want to call it. Girl, I have made so many videos about that. I'm planning on making a new one really soon and it's awful. I've literally had teachers bully me and make me feel stupid. They talk to me like this, like I was dumb or I couldn't understand them like when they write on the board like I was dyslexic or acting like it's not that big of a deal and I should be on the same pace with everything as everybody else in my class when I have a learning disability because that's exactly what that is and even anxiety that can I'm sure affect you in the classroom. If it's really bad, talk to a counselor about it, talk to an administrator about it, but if you think that they're not doing it on purpose, like they genuinely don't understand, then it's okay to educate them in a respectful way, pull them aside, maybe say like, hey, when you treat me like this and different than the other kids, it makes me feel like this because this is something I already struggle with so much and I just need you to sort of understand that so I can learn and I can do well in your class. And I feel like it's just one of those things, if you don't struggle with it yourself, it's hard to put yourself in their shoes and you think, oh, that person is just overreacting or oh, that person is just playing dumb for attention, this and that, when that's not the case at all. First date advice, get some good conversation flowing. Find a common connection with that person so you guys are able to bond and you're not just having small talk. Also, if you're a girl or honestly, if you're a guy, whatever, it doesn't matter, there's no gender roles here. Don't let that person pay for you entirely. Honestly, always good to offer at least or pay for yourself. I found if you don't know a person very well, sometimes like a lot of guys or girls could expect something. Hey, I paid for this, so like you're not even gonna kiss me goodnight or other things. Just putting that out there. It's always a pro tip. Advice for making friends at EDC. Make lots of candy. If you guys don't know what candy is, it's all like the rave bracelets that you literally make yourself with the beads and whatnot and you like write different things on them. Go up to people, trade candy with them, go up and compliment their outfits. EDC is a very big event and usually people are pretty nice but make sure you use common social cues just like anywhere else if a person has their back turned and they're just like eating food they probably don't want to be bothered by like some random person but if a person's walking around or you're next to them in line and they strike up a conversation that's like the perfect opportunity to make a friend ask where they're from etc so how do you deal with hate on YouTube and other social media you just have to realize that people project their own insecurities onto others so if someone's having a bad day they're probably gonna take it on you you cannot take that personally because if you know who you are and you know that you enjoy the videos you're putting out or the pictures you're posting, etc. Other people judging are just unhappy with themselves. Like, of course I get hate on social media and YouTube. Like, it's my job. In the beginning, I remember I would get one comment that was like not super nice and I'd be like, oh no, maybe I should change this about myself or maybe they're right. But then you get to a point where you're literally like, I don't care. I literally have such thick skin because of social media that I didn't have as much before. If somebody's hating on you, they're trying to find a reason not to like you because they're comparing themselves to you and they're feeling real shitty about themselves because you're super awesome them and they're like, oh no, I gotta find a reason why they're not awesome so I can like feel like I'm on their level or above them. And that's what people do when they're hating. How do you know if you're choosing the right college? I go to a community college currently. I'm transferring for the new semester. I'm gonna be at Chico State two years there that I have my bachelor's. And I started off at a community college because I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. Just choose what makes you happy. There's no right or wrong college to attend. Just be proud of yourself for even making that step in the first place. Okay, I got a lot of questions on how to be more self-confident. Learn to love yourself naked, with clothes on, no makeup or with makeup on in all your different forms because then overall 
you can be confident in any sort of situation. If you want to improve your body, go to the gym, eat healthier. But past a certain point, this is the body that you're given. Learn to love it and it's not going to be perfect. Same thing with facial features or your hair or, you know, there's a million other things. You can always work on improving things about yourself that you don't like, but you can't change everything about yourself. Nobody else is like you. We're all snowflakes. We all have different things that we're going to bring to the table and things that make us unique inside and out. How do you realize that someone is bad for you if they're fake and you don't know who to trust? I have a really hard time with that just because I always see the best in people. When you get a bad vibe from somebody, if you pick up on some red flags, don't overlook them. That is your gut telling you that this person probably isn't the best person for you. Your gut is telling you that for a reason. How to save money when you get paid a good amount but bills be a lot more. Budgeting is honestly so important. It doesn't matter how much money you make. You need to have an idea of how much you spend every month on bills and then also on other necessities like food and gas or how much you should be spending if you're maybe spending too much and then an idea of how much you make and then when you compare that you should see how much you have left over and you should be putting that in your savings. If you're able to get rid of some of your bills do that. For me I don't have a TV because I know I will not watch TV. I just watch Netflix and YouTube and that's it. So if I had a TV there would be no use paying for it. There would be no use paying for the cable etc. Figure out a system that works for you but I'm telling you write everything down. Do you have any advice on college kids on a budget who want to become YouTubers? I had no freaking money when I started YouTube. I spent all the money I had on this camera that I'm using. It's the same one I have two years later. Didn't have a ring light. Didn't have any lighting. If you guys see my earlier videos, I'm literally sitting against a window in my dorm. I had a MacBook, which I already had for years and it barely worked. And I used the free iMovie app to edit my videos. If you're able to tweet me just now, you probably have either a laptop or a phone. Use your webcam. You don't have to have perfect quality to go viral, get subscribers, and then start making money. And then you can buy better equipment because that's what happens for like most people. I still don't have microphone. Everyone has microphones and they're like super expensive and yeah, maybe it makes the audio better, but I have still never used one. How do you get motivation for school in the gym? For school, the motivation is that I want to make money. I want to live the lifestyle that I want to live. And yeah, you do not need an education like college to make a lot of money in life, but it does provide another path, another route, another way. Like if you want to use your degree ever, which I don't even know if I ever will, to be honest. Also just to make my parents proud, that's a motivating factor for me. I think everyone's motivation is going to be different. For the gym, it's because I want to have a nice body and I post a lot of pictures on Instagram and on my Patreon, etc. And a lot of the time I'm showing a lot of skin. I live in California. It's hot. And I want to be able to look at those pictures and be like, I look good because why would I want to post a thing where I didn't feel like I look good in it, you know? Plus I just feel better. Like I'm happier. I just feel more motivated and just in a better mood. Like if you work out in the morning, your endorphins are like, yes. I love this. And so once I get that feeling, it gets a little bit addictive and like I want to work out more. If you look good, you feel good and working out provides both of those. Self-harm relapse tips, really struggling with suicidal thoughts and mental health the last few days. Love you so much. Love you too. To this, I would definitely say you have to find what works for you to pull you out of that mindset. For me, back when I dealt with like some of the stuff that you're talking about, what worked for me was staying distracted, constantly doing stuff so I didn't really give my mind time to wander. Also being around other people who can distract you really, really helps or people that you can talk to but sometimes it's better not to talk about your problems like all the time try to do things that make you feel really good about yourself whether it's taking a hot shower playing soccer if you love to play soccer obviously it's different for everyone but everyone who asked me some questions thank you so much I tried to answer as many as I could but I've already been talking for like literally an hour into the camera I would love to do another one of these videos very soon so please ask me more questions write the questions below for the future ask Allie that way I can just like look in the comments on here for the next video thank you for watching thumbs it up if it helped you in any way if you like me doing these sort of videos subscribe if you are new turn on post notifications by hitting that bell button right next to the subscription box hit it twice to receive all my notifs that would be awesome follow my social media also i have a patreon if you guys want to check that out it'll be linked below in the description for private snapchat exclusive photo shoots early videos etc and i will see you guys in the next video later all getters bye